everybody. I'm Andrew Davis with Recon Research. And here with me today is Jordan Owens, the Vice President of Technology at Pexip, one of the really innovative companies in the video space. We're here today, I wanted to ask Jordan a few questions about a recent announcement that I thought was very exciting. They call it adaptive composition. So briefly, Jordan, can you tell the audience what is adaptive composition and what are sort of the main benefits from an end user's perspective? Absolutely, Andrew. And first of all, uh, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, it's absolute pleasure to be with you. Uh, to your point, uh, we at Pexip did recently launch a feature called adaptive composition. Uh, the idea around adaptive composition is to return the human element to video conferencing. The video conferencing industry, quite candidly, has remained unchanged in terms of the in-meeting experience for the last 20 to 25 years. Voice switching has been driven based on audio levels, not based on uh, the amount of content or the amount of interaction that's driven within the meeting. Uh, and, and it's not based on facial recognition or people that are in the meeting. It's based on systems or devices that join into the meeting. And we wanted to collapse this around the human part of it and return the focus of the meeting to the meeting itself and really drive up face-to-face -face communication, drive up eye contact, and as a result, drive up interactivity within that meeting. Jordan, I think as a video conferencing professional and an experienced one, you've been unkind to your own industry. There have been a few innovations, um, and I would highlight two, which I think relate directly to adaptive composition. Uh, the first one is uh, camera face tracking, and For now sure. we have auto framing, which I think you'll relate to. And the other one is quite old, and that is in the multi-point conference world, we went from voice switching to uh, what's known as continuous presence. But enough from me, go back. What are the benefits or the main features you wanna cover in, ad in adaptive composition? Absolutely, and there's three main features uh, that are related to this. And, and to the first one that you highlighted uh, is auto framing. Uh, auto framing, the idea around auto framing is that when I join into a meeting, the infrastructure on the back end immediately looks into that video picture that's coming in and identifies the faces that are present within that incoming video image. Once we are able to identify the faces, we can then identify where we want to digitally crop that image in an effort to bring equal representation of the faces within the meeting. So if I happen to be in a conference room where the camera zoomed all the way out, and yet I'm sitting in the back of the room, we can immediately zoom in on the face within that image in an effort to drive up that equal representation or that eye contact within the image. To your point, go ahead, go ahead. Well, so, so just to be clear, you're looking at the image that's coming in from the camera in conference room X. So does that mean that your technology will work with any camera? That's exactly right. And that's exactly where I was going with that, Andrew, because you are 100% correct. We will work with any camera, with any client, with any image that happens to come in. And in a world where somebody's using their laptop and just their embedded web camera, it'll absolutely provide the same value there. In a world where you're in a high-end uh, high managed conference room with these speaker tracking cameras, with these advanced technologies, we'll work seamlessly with that as well. The idea is not to provide better or worse experience with one or the other, but to embrace the experience with whatever we have and provide the value where we can. If in a world we get the perfect image, we'll just use that. There's nothing for us to do, but there's also plenty of opportunities for us to provide additional value there as well. So the camera, using a current version of a modern camera, that would do auto framing, and then this comes to the Pexip server, and then you frame what's already been framed, uh, and, th it, it, and, and then you would move on to what I think uh, I read about as intelligent composition. Is that the second stage of this process? The second stage for sure, but we wouldn't actually over frame the image, right? So in a world where we do get the perfect image from these auto framed cameras, we just leave it alone and move I on, see. right? So I we see. leave it alone. The idea is not to create motion sickness, but to create a much better experience. To your point then, you're absolutely right. Once we now have the properly framed image, we take this a step further and we count the number of faces that are directly within that video image that we're now processing. And when we go to compose the continuous presence image or the active presence image, uh, we can then bubble up the, the room endpoints that have multiple people in them higher up in the overall video window. The idea around this is that rooms with more people in them will inherently generate more interactivity within the conference. 
The reason being is because not only do you have multiple people in the room who are all going to have opinions and all going to have conversations, but they're going to interact with each other as well. And typically when you have presentations that are given, they're given from those conference rooms with multiple people in them. So we can now bubble those up into the image to drive more attention into the larger rooms and again, to create an equal representation of people so that all of the heads, if you will, are the same size within that meeting and everybody uh, gets that equal participation. So, so the conference room with five people would have more screen real estate than say a conference room with one or two per people. Is that, is That's that how exactly it? right? That's exactly okay. right. And the driver behind that is because, because of those five people, I want to make sure I can see mm -hmm. all five people on equal footing with the individuals that are also connected into that meeting. That's exactly okay. right. When this calls over, we're almost done. Uh, I'm going to ask you for perhaps a demo. Um, I remember from the press release that there was a third benefit. Um, um, what is that? That third benefit is really all about the meeting indicators that we provide within the meeting experience uh, itself. So historically, all of those meeting indicators have always hovered along the sides. And what that's forced is shrinking of the video composition, if you will, so that I create black space that I can use to provide those indicators. We're yeah. now bubbling those indicators up to the top center of the screen so that the information is still in your periphery. I can still see people indicators, recording indicators, lock or unlock indicators, all within my periphery, but they're no longer interfering with the video experience itself. Again, it's about how do we drive a video first experience, but yet still give you the information you need in order to conduct your meeting appropriately. Very interesting. Very interesting. So uh, last question is, is uh, adaptive composition the end of the road here for innovation from PECSIP, or are there some additional secret things coming out of your lab north of the Arctic Circle? <laughs> As I'm sure you can imagine, this is the beginning of a journey, not to the end for sure. We have a lot of really cool, innovative ideas on how we want to take this technology to the next level. The biggest driver behind adaptive composition is us now starting to plumb in AI and machine learning engines into the backend software mm -hmm. that run in an automated fashion. And you can start to imagine where we want to take this technology and other value that we want to provide. Now, to be fair, these are the super secret squirrel labs. So I can't get into a lot of the details okay. now, but I can assure you, Andrew, stay tuned because we've okay. got some really cool ideas. No no announcements being made on this call, I assume. Um, Not on this but, call, but, but stay But I, I do think what you've talked about here is really um, real user benefits coming out of the use of artificial intelligence in a video setting. So I want to thank you very much for your time today. But before we go, perhaps you can um, show some screenshots or give, give an example uh, of this great innovation. Absolutely, Andrew. And the way I'll do it is I'll actually transform this meeting itself into a live demo of adaptive composition. Right. And let me bring in some virtual endpoints, some pre-recorded friends of mine that can help illustrate this view. And the first person that I will bring in is a perfect representation of how the auto framing itself will work out. You see Camilla as she joins into this meeting. Uh, she's sitting in the back of the room and she's sitting in such a way that she is not properly framed within that image. We immediately recognize that and automatically zoom in on her visual image within this meeting experience. And then as I bring in additional people, I'll bring in some additional uh, rooms wow. with multiple people. I'll bring in uh, uh, some board rooms, some large conference rooms, some large format meetings, all of those types of things, you will see that the video window itself immediately adjusts to the number of people that are inside that room, more so than, uh, uh, than the amount of noise or the amount of sound that's being generated in that room. And as I now fill up the screen, you will immediately see the indicators start to populate, the full screen that starts to populate. Again, this is all about how do we drive a much better overall interaction within the meeting, returning the focus of the meeting to the, the meeting itself and away from the technology. Uh, it's all about human interaction, face-to-face -face interaction. Great. This is really a fine demonstration uh, of real value providing, provided by the technology. Last question, will uh, attendees at Enterprise Connect this year be able to see this? 100%, Andrew. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a feature that we're extremely proud of and can't wait to demonstrate for everybody. So certainly swing by our booth at Enterprise Connect. We'd love to give you a personal tour. Okay, great. Jordan, thank you so much for your time and thank you for a great demo. Look forward to seeing you next month in Orlando.